Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class. And today's card class is another video featuring scenic stamping with Penny Black's really beautiful and elegant stamp called Escape, which you can see there. And in today's video I'm going to show you two different techniques and two totally different color schemes with this stamp just to demonstrate all of the really various and fun different looks you can get with these scenic stamps just by using the same stamp but with some different colors and some different techniques. So before we begin I just wanted to mention I will have a full supply list up at the very end of the video on screen for both of these cards. So if you want to look at anything that's being used in the video, colors, stamps, die cuts, all of that will be listed up on screen at that time and you can just hit pause to check it out in further detail. So to begin we're going to work on the ink blending technique card. And I went with a very different color scheme on this and I had a lot of fun just experimenting with the different uh, look you can get by kind of going outside of the box for a different color scheme. I'm stamping in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool and I am stamping onto smooth white cardstock which I find works best for the ink blending. And I am inking this up using Ranger Archival Inks in the mini size. And you'll see here I'm being very bold in choosing some dark colors. So I am actually working with colors such as cobalt, watering can, and acorn to do most of the stamping on this image. And I wanted this to have a sunset, almost night look to it. And I love how these inks capture the gorgeous detail that's included with this stamp. This mini size makes it really easy to get in there. I'm even kind of turning the ink pad right on its side and you can see I could ink up the trunks and some of those bottom branches. Now for this technique though, you can use any of your favorite ink pads to ink up your stamp because we will be embossing this at the end which will seal in any of the colors that you are stamping with. Well, I've started here with my lightest colors as you could see on the tree. I went in and added a medium tone towards the bottom of the tree and then used the darkest color for the trunks and the very base or lowest branches on the trees. I especially love this scene. I find it is just very wild and free looking and to me it has kind of an elegant and peaceful look to it as well. There's sort of this hilly side. I love that you see those trees more in the foreground and the water is just barely out there. Just a touch of water that shows. Um, now I did clean off my stamp really well and made sure it was dry before moving on to this next step. I patted the stamping there with an anti-static bag and now I am inking up my stamp with Versamark ink. And this is just a clear sticky ink which will allow us to emboss all of that stamping that we have done. I'm going to stamp it a couple of times just because this is a very detailed stamp and it actually has quite a bit of solid area too and I just want to be sure that all of that is captured with that Versamark ink. Now I can go ahead and remove this from my stamp positioning tool and I will sprinkle that with clear embossing powder. This is going to seal in all of that stamping that we've done and then we can apply our inks right over the top and it will resist those inks and so the colors will recede to the background and our stamping will remain in the foreground. Now I'm going to work on the sky first and I'm just using a piece of scratch thin computer paper to mask off the bottom portion of the image. You could also use like the sticky edge of post-it notes or post-it note tape or even masking paper if you didn't want to worry about holding that in place. I find it's not too bad uh, just to hold it there. If it slides I just put it right back in position. I'm using some fingertip sponge daubers to apply the ink so I just have lots of control to put that in a very small area and blend those colors together. I am using memento dye inks to do this. Any of your dye inks would work well for this technique so you could also use like your distress inks those would work really well or make art blendable dye inks which I've used in some other videos to do the ink blending. Now 
Now, when I was making this, I did kind of have in mind that I was going to use only just a kind of a small portion of this scene. So I wasn't quite as worried about these sort of outer edges and getting it perfectly blended in because I thought I'm going to focus mainly on this area here around and behind this main tree. And you'll see that a little bit more uh, when you see the finished card. I think that will make more sense. Now I did move on to using a large jumbo sponge dauber to apply the ink here around the outer edges. Any of your ink blending tools with foam pads or sponge, whatever you like to use to do your ink blending, your sponging, will work for this technique. And you can see I really love how just the very tips of some of that grass and tree, they have that very light color with these darker colors um, going into the background. And that's because we did emboss that and it helps that retain that color and that lightness even when we apply those inks because it resists those inks. Just the very tips of some of those branches in that left hand corner, you can really get a look at that and it's even prettier in real life. I decided to go in here and just kind of darken this up over on this side. And you can see there that sky coming together. Now I'm going to work on the lower half of the image. And I want to get just this little sliver of water here with this light blue using that fingertip sponge dauber to do that. So fun to see these different scenes come to life just by doing these inks on here. And then I'm just going to use that larger sponge dauber and start applying the ink here to the foreground beachy area. Like I said, I wanted this to look very, like the very end of sunset. It's pretty dark out. So I did keep with these darker blue colors down here at the bottom or at the sort of grass and beach area. I'm doing even darker coloring here with a fingertip sponge dauber. That just allowed me to get right up to that water's edge without um, going over into the water. I did want to keep that fairly light so you could see the contrast of where the beach ended and the water began. I also grabbed some rich cocoa color to really darken things up. And you can see there that the embossed and stamped image, you can still see that with that darker color on top. Some of the lighter grasses show through and the lighter portions of the trees. And that is all that was needed to do the inking on that card. I finished it off by white heat embossing one of the sentiments from the center set that you can see here called Destination Sentiments. And I did trim this down using just a basic circle die to make a small circular card and to highlight that sunset portion and water portion of the image. So you can see by using just a portion of the image and some really different color choices, you can get a really different look with these scenic stamps. And moving on to our next card, this is the same stamp, but a different technique and totally different colors, and you get a totally different look. These stamps are really, really versatile and so fun to play with. So now I am, again, stamping in the Misty Stamp Positioning Tool, but I am stamping onto Canson 140-pound watercolor paper. I've cleaned my stamp really well. And I started here just by inking the entire image using some Toffee Crunch Memento ink. And I find this is nice when you have a lot of detail to your image and you just want to sort of get a base layer down. And then on top of that, you can add your shading in. So I knew I wanted this all to have a bit of a vintage feel to it. So this Toffee Crunch is a great place to start. Now I'm going to go in with my archival inks and sort of do the shading right on top of that Toffee Crunch. Now you will see I do 
several impressions and I am stamping onto watercolor paper so it does have some texture to it but you will see with these inks I get pretty it really captures the detail of these trees and all those little branches just by darkening up the color and doing more than one impression with the stamp positioning tool which is really easy to do because for this entire scene you only need to use one stamp I find that that is just so easy to do and you can focus on your colors and not worry about switching back and forth between lots of different stamps you can just do your color layering all with one stamp so I went with a totally different color scheme on this I wanted to have that earthy vintage sort of feel and I am using my archival inks to do this I'm using some orange blossom and acorn ink again on top of that toffee crunch memento and those archival inks are going to be waterproof which is important because we will be painting right on top of all of this stamping and I don't want all of that to start bleeding and blending all over the place once we start adding our water I want that detail to stay there so when doing this technique you just want to be sure to pick inks that are waterproof Again, the mini size allows me to add the color only in the places that I want it. Like for example here, I'm just adding that darker color down at the base of the tree and onto the trunk. And then I'll do that again here down below. You can turn your ink pad on the side and use sort of the edge or the corner of the ink pad to really get it in just where you want it. And this is really, for me, a fun part of creating with these stamps. It's like you're doing your coloring and shading when you paint or color an image in, but here you get to do it right on the stamp itself. And I'm going to add just a few details here with a marker. I wanted to be sure for the selective coloring to choose a marker that is waterproof, so I am using a Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Stamper's Big Brush Pen to do that. That's India ink, so once it dries, it will be permanent. And I can also take that directly to the paper like I'm doing here so that I get a really nice solid portion for those trunks. They, When you're stamping onto that textured paper, sometimes for those solid areas, it's really difficult, especially if you're coloring onto your stamp with a marker, for it to be totally solid. So you can just trace right over where you stamped with that marker if you want it to be very bold. So once I was done stamping, I was ready to paint this in. I'm using my Secura Koi Field Sketch Box watercolors to paint this, but you can use any of your favorite watercolors. I painted first a little bit of blue down for the water and then added a touch of green so that it has more of a turquoise look and that just kind of adds to that vintage appeal. I'm painting over some of these grassy areas with some greens. And then I'll work here on the beach. I do kind of jump around the image to allow some areas to dry before I paint right next to them so that they don't bleed or blend too much. Go down here and darken this up and then sort of following the colors of the stamping that I've done on there grabbing some of that sort of orangish red color putting that up into those trees and by painting right over the area that was stamped I think it enhances those details that were stamped and it really gives the entire scene the look that everything was painted as opposed to stamped and then colored in so if you paint over some of the areas that you've stamped then that makes it look like you just hand painted everything on the scene kind of blending that out. I put down the color first with the paint on the brush, then I rinse my brush off a little bit and then blend it out with just clean water on my brush. I'm going to make sure that this is dry before I move on to the sky so that I don't get too much bleeding of the areas that I've already painted into the sky. 
And then keeping with sort of a vintage look, I put just a bit of brown down along the horizon line and then working that blue into that. And those two will sort of mix together and give that more rustic look uh, to the sky. Even a touch of green ties into that turquoise that's in the water area that we already painted. And the scene is complete. So to finish off this card, I use the stitch nested frames that you see over on the left to just die cut out the painting that I had done that adds a nice subtle detail around the edge. You could also use our leaf stitched frames, that's one of our new creative dies and I think that set would work really well with this particular image too. And then I added a sentiment, this time from the set over on the right hand side, this is called Strength. And I really felt like a lot of these um, sentiments worked beautifully with this elegant, uh, beautiful scene. So I used just a portion of the sentiment there, you may be far away but you're always in my thoughts, to finish off this card. Now this is a standard size card, a four and a quarter by five and a half, so an A2 size card. So you can use these large stamps for whatever size and style card that you prefer. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram and Twitter as well as our website and blog and I'll link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. Here are the supplies for the first card that we created and if you hold on in just a moment I'll pop up the supplies for the second. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.